highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. This is TRS Clips. You believe in alien yes, life? Yes, 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 yes. Since childhood or over the course of your career, things have happened. Over the have... course of my career, really? I believe it. Yes. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Sir. <laughs> Uh, what made you believe in aliens very, over the course of your The opinion? answer is very simple. You are in Earth and you are here and existing. Yeah. How you came into existence? If you answer that question, it will answer the question which you asked. Like what you came into existence, there could be so many other areas where some other creatures may be existing. So the mathematical possibility is why you believe in aliens. It's a practically, it is It is there, you, you are understanding. Now the question is you are not able to communicate with them, you are not able to talk to them, you are not able to do. But you will, eventually you will, you will do it. I'm sure about it. There's no basic uh, doubt in my mind about it. Uh, it may not be having the same shape and uh, something. Yeah. It is there. It is there in the sense I have no doubt about it. I am very authoritatively telling you that it is there. Which is why I feel like now ISRO's budgets should be directed towards a machine that sends out an OM, 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 OM. <laughs> Sorry. It's a horrible joke. Sorry, guys. No, no, no. It's your show. You, you should say OM, OM, OM. <laughs> we we'll have a nice jadu type alien come up to us. Not necessarily in that uh, OM, OM. But I think there are rumors which you must be aware of. There are some communications back which we are not able to decipher. Oh. And there are some planets which are so many light years away which resemble that of the Earth. Okay. Let's break down this communications thing. Who has caught those communications? No, I, I'm saying about stray news in the space news. If you read regularly, right. you, you, you get into some years back it has come. Okay. But somebody, some wing of the NASA is already working on that. They are trying to send the signals, different kinds of signals, different frequencies, different possibilities. What do they send out? Yeah, I don't know, but what they send out could be, how are you, where are you, who you are, who are you, like that could be okay. in different languages. Now they are getting, uh, they didn't get any reply so far. In some, sometimes they get some signals back, not necessarily a reply to this. Maybe they are also seeking Something yeah. like that. So those signals were uniform, uh, regular. So they are trying to decipher it, but they were not able to decipher it. They were uniform and regular. Yeah. It means that they came from some life form. Exactly. Some kind of a sensible form. Something uh, that had a brain. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Maybe superior brain than yours. Yeah, perhaps. Could be. But why were we not able to decipher it? Why? I don't know. Because I, I, you see, it could be, it is not very easy to decipher uh, many things. First of all, I don't know the coding, how it comes and uh, sure. what it is. It is, uh, But sure. it is there. You can be rest assured of it. Sure. It is there. I'm an electronics and telecom engineer. So I understood what you meant by coding. But I'm trying to explain it to the average listener. Uh, basically, you know, we take phone calls for granted. Like we call our friends just by typing the name on our phone and dialing that number. But there's a very deep format of engineering that goes into sending your voice from your mouth into the phone, to the mobile tower, to your friend's phone, into your friend's ear. Uh, there's coding that takes place. That whole sound wave of your voice is encoded. Uh, it's separated into bits, etc. It's a very complex form of engineering. Therefore, sir is saying, and please correct me if I'm not going to add to what I'm saying, sir. Uh, sir is saying that we found coded sound waves or some kind of waves from some remote uh, intelligent civilization, which space agencies here received. Have I done a good job? No. I'm feeling embarrassed. I, no, no, you have done an excellent <laughs> job. Which is a common sense, uh, we can understand. But for your information, I am not an electronics engineer. I am a propulsion engineer. I studied uh, rocket propulsion. I am an electronic. Yeah, that's oh, I right. Okay. I, I'm telling you, you said oh, okay. that. So okay. I'm saying, understanding myself, I must be a, an engineering graduate in your level so that I can understand. But you didn't go into depth, so I'm able to understand. If you go into depth, I'm out. I don't <laughs> think I'll be able to go into depth. Because <laughs> uh, have you seen the other Armadon movie, Three Idiots? <laughs> that's how my engineering life was. <laughs> this is how much engineering I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, but let's talk about alien life again. Uh, did you see that whole Mexican government or 
Colombian government, I can't remember, some Central American or South American government which actually revealed that alien's body in the parliament apparently. Later there were videos of how someone made a cake that looks like the alien and then people started assuming that oh it was actually just a false reveal. But we've not heard too much more after that one news broke out. No, that is journalism. <laughs> You remember I was telling you, sensationalizing the... Some journalists must be there from, who might have migrated from yeah. India to... They must have done to something. To Mexico. Honestly, <laughs> I think I'll tell you, it is not that easy to... You are right. Actually, the Mexican fellows, they were trying to do some space-related work. They were very primitive in their okay. area. They were asking for some collaboration with us, but we were not... Uh, till recently... Uh, privatization, we never agreed for any collaboration with anyone. Uh, now I hope in the uh, they may try to do some collaboration. Not necessarily with Mexico, but generally I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, do the ISRO scientists and engineers amongst themselves talk about alien life or have these conversations? Not, 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 not in their everyday affair. I'll tell you, you see, many people mistake, uh, for example, aerophysics or astrophysics all those things are not in our daily routine discussions. Okay. So even if you take the Chandrayaan, there is a primary goal is how to propel it to that height. Got it. And then how to make it to come out and things like that. Then what it measures, how it measures is that of a physicist's job. Understood. And the I wouldn't be able to understand honestly okay. what is what. Okay. But this is a collective thing. So you are questioning... We were not, but everybody agree, according to me, at least from my little discussion, everybody knows that there is some kind of an alien uh, civilization or whatever you call it is existing. This is all the science-oriented minds at ISRO. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Damn. Because of the mathematical possibility. Not, not only that, in, as I told you, I believe in our intelligence. Common sense intelligence. Everybody knew that it is there. What is the big deal about it? Because after all, if it is a big bang theory and if that is how it, the universe is formed, then you have uh, solar systems and then you have all kinds of things. Milky Way. Uh, you see, these are all things which is known, everybody. Only thing is not able to explain because we don't want to go deep into it. Uh, at least I don't want to go deep into it because I don't know many, many things on that. Yep. But all I know is peripherally, I know that it is there. Yeah. Um, you know, my question is, why do UFO sightings only happen in America? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I, it implies that you are saying that they are bluffing. No, no, no. Uh, no. It implies that <laughs> they possibly happen in India also. I don't know. But I, I, but he, he, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know the answer. I, but is it so that only in America? It, uh... In media, only the American sightings are spoken about because most media is American, like related to these things. Indian media doesn't talk enough about aliens. I, the... I honestly don't know. I don't think there is any specific reason why it should appear in America. Because from an alien point of view, it's America just, is different. It's a small, shrunk ball. Yeah. You, you are... <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, say if there were UFO interactions that happened in India, um, the government's first protocol would probably be to call someone at ISRO and say, what do we do now? I thank that I am not there in ISRO, so I would <laughs> have to answer that. Okay. But I, I myself don't know. But okay. there is a... Space Physics Division is there in, in ISRO, which is uh, active. And then you have the Physical Research Laboratory in uh, Ahmedabad, where they are doing the uh, scientific experiments. In fact, that is how myself and Kalam, we originated uh, the payload integration. They bring the payload, we integrate it with the, with the Nike, and then Nike Apache, and then Sender rockets, which are not our own rockets, but... Uh, so those scientists, I remember those uh, those people, like Dr. Satya Prakash, uh, Dr. Wapian Kalla, uh, Dr. Kali, uh, O.S. Rajan, and uh, so on and so forth. But you know, the many of them, of course, later migrated in some sense into ISRO headquarters. Originally, we were part of INCASPER, then INCASPER became uh, TAFR. And then we became uh, Indian Space Research Organization, etc. But our chairman, Professor Dhawan, had an excellent team. 
the team consists of some of the names i remember sudarshan uh, siddharth uh, jp singh bharat uh, you know these are great 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 people these are the people in fact professor davan is the one who drew the blueprint for the future isro including gslv including pslv etc which year was uh, this? as early as 1979 1978 and then it is professor u r rao who gave shape to those blueprint so in in that sense if you really look at it the credit goes to these uh, staff officers they call and that blueprint has been accurate in terms of very 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 nice very very see the whole problem is our projects are very vague very speculative because if you do this you do this if it is mm-hmm. successful you see it is not like any other part you can't guarantee and success guarantee, but so many things are there professor davan i should accept it is a is a great scientist uh, he gave did he give a basic timeline that in the 2020s you guys should focus on this in the 20 20- yes this blu- is blueprint includes the dates and the dates we were able to meet not all but uh, this cryogenic we couldn't meet the date actually that you know there there was a slippage of more than 12 14 years but uh, the high thrust engines we have to meet but davan retired 1985 that is uh, so many 38 years back what's predicted for this and the next decade no he predicted or he drew the blueprint for pslv see 79 slv3 went kalams project afterwards you have the pslv you have the you now i you have the aslv you have the pslv then you have the gslv all the three were going smoothly but gslv had different variants a gslv1 gslv2 gslv3 now that includes a cryogenic system that cryogenic system is what we were hoping to have it because of uh, the russian contract but that was blown up out that got delayed instead of 2001 it came in 2014 so but otherwise it's an excellent uh, planning okay. i can call it as planning so these are playlists made especially for you we've tailor made learning experiences for you the rs clips